Hello, thanks for your interest in this mini lecture on the base maps that are available in Leaflet. One of the big advantages of using Leaflet as your JavaScript web mapping API is that there are a bunch of really cool base maps available. And these range from really useful ones like street maps and topo maps to more artistic ones like watercolors and fun ones like a heavy metal themed spinal map, which we'll see. Pioneer themed ones to make it look like an old, old style map and some that are based on constantly changing data even, such as current snow cover, etc. This is actually lecture number 24 out of about 65 lectures in an entire course that I have available on Udemy. So if you're interested in learning more and you can bear with me till the end of this lecture, there's information there on how you can sign up for that course. So thanks again, and let's get started. Welcome back students. In this lecture we're going to look at some of the base map providers and the different kind of base maps that we can get. There are a bunch available. We're going to look at about 20 or so in today's lecture that'll give you a pretty good overview of what's available. But first we're going to take a look at the documentation. So all of these layers that I'm going to show you are available in a leaflet plugin called Leaflet Providers. And if we go to this plugin page, we can scroll down and look at their preview example map. And this is pretty cool because it shows you not only what these different background maps look like, but it also shows you the exact code that you need to load them into Leaflet. Now the Leaflet Providers plugin is set up so all you need to do is provide it a string. It's the name of the background map that you want and it'll load it up. If you don't use a Leaflet Providers preview, you can still use these background maps, but you need to create the map layer and add it to the map the old fashioned way. And we saw this in our example code with the Leaflet OpenStreetMap background layer. One thing I really like about this preview is that it shows you how to create the background maps in pure JavaScript as well. And also the menu that shows all the different background layers that are available are live and synced with the main map. So they move when the main map moves, and that's pretty cool too. Now in the next lecture I'll show you how to create a layer control where you can select between different background maps. But in this layer we're just going to look at the maps themselves. And you'll notice over here on the right there are a lot of different layers available. So you can get a lot of different looks. Some of them will often be just a layer that has towns and countries labeled. And it might be the same version of a map without towns and countries labeled. So you can choose what's most appropriate for your needs. And most of these cover the whole world. There's a few that only cover the US or other countries like this base map AT only covers Austria for some reason. But yeah, there's all kinds. This one shows the world at night. So you can show the light pollution. And some of these have weather, there's one for snow cover, there's all kinds of different information. And we're not obviously going to look at all these, but we'll look at some of the most important ones. So I'm going to go straight to the web map that I created. Up here in the right hand corner, we have a layers control that gives the option for all these different layers that I've loaded in here. And again, in the next lecture I'm going to show you how we create this control, and how we actually select a bunch of layers to add to it. For right now we're just going to look at the different layers that are available. So this first layer, the one that's open by default is just the basic OpenStreetMap layer that's free. It's free to use. It covers the entire planet. It's made from user submitted data, so it's constantly being updated. And so those things make it a pretty good choice for just a basic background map showing streets. And it also shows some other things like park boundaries and areas of forest and things like that. Now OpenStreetMap also provides this background in a black and white version. It's got the same data. It's just in shades of gray. Now there are some other street maps that are available. Esri has a street map that looks like this. Um, Bunder Forest has a transport map that, that highlights the main arteries for trucks. And a lot of these other layers have pretty good street data as well. They also have options for different background layers that show topography. Esri has a topo map. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you can see how detailed some of these topo maps are. This is the Esri layer. There's a company called Here that used to be Nokia that also has what they call terrain maps, which is basically hill shading, and you can see they have different colors representing different elevation levels. This open topo map, I think, is probably the best for showing topographic data. The topo lines are a little bit clearer, they're a little bit more detailed. I think this layer looks really good when you're zoomed in pretty far. When you're at medium levels of zoom, I think maybe it doesn't look quite as good. But I also really like when you zoom it far out like this. 
And you can really get an idea of what the topography of a larger area is using this layer. Now some of these other topo maps, for instance, this here terrain, so look pretty good at large scales. This one, I think, looks best at medium scales, which is where the open topo map, in my opinion, looks the worst. There's a couple other topo maps available. Stamen has one that, again, I think looks best at medium scales. It's not quite as detailed. And then Thunder Forest also has one that they call the landscape map. And this one also looks pretty good when you zoomed in close. Not quite as good as the open topo map, I don't think, but it's a good option. Now, Thunder Forest also has a recreation map called Outdoors. And this tends to show more recreational things like biking trails and campgrounds and things like that. There's also a specific map for cycling that Thunder Forest puts out there that shows cycling routes in cities and trails in the mountains and things like that. And Thunder Forest, by the way, is a private corporation and the maps are not completely free to use. You can sign up for a free account, but there's a limit on how many tiles you can download in a specific time period. And that limit's pretty generous. If it's just you or a couple of the people using your map, you probably won't exceed it. But if you create a map that's out there and there's thousands and thousands of people using it, you'll pretty quickly exceed your limit and you'll have to upgrade your account to a paid account. There are several different levels. Just something to keep in mind when you're choosing a background map layer. These here accounts, again, this used to be Nokia, but they also have to have a paid account. And the way it works is when you sign up for one of their accounts, you get what's called an API key, which is just kind of a string. It's more or less a password that you have to embed in your code. And I'll show you how to do that in the next lecture. But for now, just know that in order to show those, you have to give them a code and they track that. And you might have to pay if you use a lot of imagery. Now, there's a couple sources for aerial photography. This Esri imagery is a good one. I think Esri you have to register as well, but I don't think there's any fees associated with using their image layers. And here also has a hybrid imagery layer that has not only imagery, but it also has the road layers overlaid on top of it. And again, it's usually a matter of personal choice, or sometimes one map will look better in one area and worse in another. So sometimes you just need to play around and see which looks best at the area that your map is focused on. And there's also some kind of generalized maps Thunder Forest has one that has kind of a pioneer theme, kind of an old-fashioned font, and designed to look kind of like old paper kind of color, so it's kind of an artistic form. Here also has an old basic map. It's more or less a street map. Maybe we should put that in a different category. But it's a basic navigation map, and it also shows some hill shading. National Geographic makes a pretty good map. It actually has good street-level data. But it also shows a lot more of the state and country boundaries and national parks and those kinds of things. And it's, I think, particularly good at larger scales. So if we zoom out, we'll see what it looks like at larger and larger scales. As we also has a gray canvas layer, it works better at larger scales. It just shows a little bit of background information that's not overpowering. So if you want people to mostly concentrate on the overlay layers that you provide, but want just enough in the background to be able to put the location in context, you can use these gray layer scales. And then Esri also has a layer from Delorme, and it's only available at larger scales. So this is as far in as you can zoom in. But it's really nice if you want to just show the major roads and also be able to see some of the topography, like here's a couple of volcanoes that show up really well. It's pretty clear what they are. So at larger scales, you can really get an idea of both the major road networks and topography. And there's a couple base maps that are more or less just for fun that are more artistic. For instance, Thunder Forest has one they call the Spinal Map. That's a play on Spinal Tap, the movie. And it has kind of a heavy metal themed fonts and display. And water, oceans and stuff show up as fire. Anyhow, it's mostly for fun. You probably wouldn't use this for serious work. But if you wanted to have, you know, for instance, a map showing the locations of your metal band's latest tour with markers for the city that they can click on and links to buy tickets and things like that, it might be a good background map. Stamen has one that they call watercolor. It also is more artistic, but it does show roads and a little bit of topography, the major topography. You can zoom in a little bit further than you can with Delorme. But it might come in handy if, for instance, a book cover or something like that. And Stamen also creates one called Toner, 
which is all black and white. This might actually be used for serious work. Again, if you need a map for a book that you know is not going to be published in color, you might use this. For a web map, though, you know people are going to be able to see it in color, so it's more of an artistic font. This is the effect that you want to show on your web page. All right, that's all that we're going to show you for now. Again, there's a lot more that's available. I encourage you to go to that Leaflet Providers plugin and look at the preview page, and you'll see a lot more. In the next lecture, we'll get back to coding, and I'll show you how we actually create this layer control and add different maps to it that your user can choose from. And we'll see you then.